what went wrong tonight. I know you came with the expectation to win this particular game, but it didn't happen. What went wrong? Mm. Well, I think we, we, we knew we were up against a very good uh, Mexican team playing at, uh, at home. Uh, on a, a surface that, uh, they, that they're used to. So we knew it was going to be um, tough opposition. I thought in a first half period we coped well, um, even though we didn't create the amount of chances that we would have liked to have done, but I think we had reasonable good control of the game. So certainly in, in a first half period, um, I came in at half to time not too unhappy. You know, I, th I felt we could have perhaps produced a little bit more in the final third, a few more goal scoring opportunities, but I think taking everything in the, uh, the circumstances uh, into account, I thought we did okay in the first half period. The, the problem was in the second half period where uh, a Mexican team uh, upped the tempo of their game. You know, they're, they're a very good side and they press well. And they've, have very sharp players and and we struggled to cope with the intensity of their game in, in that second half period and um, the balance is, is if you don't cope well enough in that period then at least you've got to be secure enough and, and not give away um, don't not give away goals and I thought both the goals that we conceded um, I think from our point of view were, were two poor defensive goals. Hello guys, welcome back to another edition of the Black Star Series live here on Sports Corner GH. My name is Adam. So guys, before we jump into today's video, the winner of the giveaway will be announced later. My team is working on it. And also, shout outs to everybody. Now, let's talk about the game. Mexico to Ghana 0. Now, this is based on my opinion and how I saw the game. And I'm going to tell you why the Black Stars lost that game. It is very simple. The coach did a lot of mistakes in that game, especially from the beginning to the end. From the starting 11 to the end of that game, we had the coaching problem. Now, people are going to blame players for the poor performance we had. People are going to blame players because we lost 2-0. This is a wake-up call, not only to coach Chris Hutton, but to the players that Charlie, we have World Cup qualifiers to play and also we have an Afghan tournament to play. And our opponents are watching us. Our opponents are watching us. When they watch this performance we give today, they'll be like, okay, the Black Stars are not that strong. We could even, if Kevin are watching this performance, they would say we are not that strong and they will come at us really hard. Now, I'm going to tell you some of the reasons I believe the Black Stars lost this game. First of all, the starting 11. You see, when I looked at the starting 11, the first thing that came to mind was Chris Hutton is going to lose this game because the starting 11 was just short. Now, this was his starting 11. He, he, in goal post, Lawrence Atizigi, he played five defenders. A whooping five defenders. He played Kessel Schneider, he played Joseph Edu, he played Gideon Mensah, Nicolas Upoku, and also Stefan Ambrosius. Five defenders in the game. And then he played two DMs. He played Thomas Pate and also Elisha Owusu. I was even surprised Elisha Owusu is starting in this game ahead of Salis Abdul Samed. Number one mistake. Now he played three top. Uh, he played three top. Mohamed Kudus at right wing, he played Joseph Pinto at left wing and also played Antoine Semenyo in the middle. Now playing Joseph Pinto on the left wing is his weakness. We already know Joseph Pinto plays on the uh, right wing. It's not that like he can't play on the left wing, but he does very well when he's playing on the right wing. So why do you change the position of the player? So wrong. This whole like starting the level was just wrong from the beginning. Now you are going to play against Mexico. You are using a 5-2-3 formation. Who does this? In a game, there is a whooping seven defensive-minded players in a single game for the Black Stars. Meanwhile, our players that are doing war are all attacking-minded players. If you look at the bench, most of our players that are doing war are attacking-minded players. So if you are playing seven defensive-minded players in the game, 
do you expect to score a goal? I knew we were not even going to score a goal because there were seven players on the pitch that were all defensive. It was only three players on the pitch that were attacking minded. So what do you expect? No goals. No goals. It was as if Coach Resistance was going into the game to get a draw. A goalless draw. And it didn't happen. Now, let's go into the game and talk about the game. The first 25 minutes, we were playing the game very well because our formation was working for us. The Mexicans didn't know we were going to play a five-back and it was working well for us. But after 25 minutes, when Joseph Edo got out of the game and Thomas Pate had a yellow card, that was when the game changed. And I expected Coach Christian to see this, to see that the game changed. One, they mapped out to Mohamed Kudus. Mohamed Kudus didn't play anything in the first half. He wasn't in the game in the first half. Two, Antoine Sevenyo, I could count the number of touches he had in the first half. I could count it because he wasn't getting the passes. And I'm not going to blame him. I'm not going to blame Thomas Partey too. Thomas Partey gets the ball and nobody makes a run. Nobody, absolutely nobody makes a run for Thomas Partey to pass. So the midfield in there, Thomas Partey and Elisha Owusu was a disaster. Total disaster. We already know it was Thomas Partey and Salis Abdul Samet. So how come Coach Christian decided that today he wants to go with Salis Abdus and he wanted to go with Elisha Owusu instead of Salis Abdul Samet? Why? You want to know. You can't just all of a sudden start a whole new midfield partnership. Getting close to World Cup qualifiers and also AFCON. I chose Coach Resilience was building a team. If you are building a team, why don't you play your formation? The 4 2 3 1. Why don't you play it? Why do you go and play a formation that's Charlie? You know it is defensive. It's as if you were playing the way we play at the World Cup. The Saints, no difference. I don't, I, don't, I don't get it. I don't get it. And the game from the 25th minute to the 45th minute, we were just out of that game. We were losing all the 50-50 balls, all the second balls. We were losing. The, the, the Mexicans settled into the game. They were getting a lot of possession. The only thing we did very well in the first half was not allow the Mexicans create a chance or get a shot on target. That was the only thing. Because to me, the first half was boring. It was, it was boring for me because I was watching the match and I was like, ah, this first half is seriously boring. It was just too boring. And the Black Star players were too aggressive in my opinion. It's friendly match for God's sake. Why do you have to be aggressive? They were too aggressive. And I was even afraid that they might even get me. They were too aggressive in my opinion. Now in the second half, I was expecting Coach Chris Hutin to do what he did against Liberia. Change your formation. In, against Liberia, he was being the three back. But when he came in the se second half, he reverted back to the fallback. So you should have changed your formation because you saw from 25th to 45th minutes that Alpha, then you allowed that formation to go through the strategy to go through uh, until you were scored two goals. Coach Chris Hutton, as for this loss there, it's not the players who, it is Coach Chris Hutton's fault. I'm just going to say it. A coaching problem that caused this, this downfall from starting lineup to the players that came on the pitch. Wrong. Totally wrong. Totally wrong. Because if you are going to play a, a, a three back or a five back, I beg you, you need pacey wingers. Mohamed Kudus now did not see wings on no bushy. So you should have just moved him to the midfield and removed either Elijah or Uso, Thomas Pate so that Mohamed Kudus will be playing in the midfield. But you allow Thomas uh, Mohamed Kudus to play the right wing for a longer period even in the second half. He wasn't playing anything. He was our most dangerous player, but he was mapped out. So you should have just used more of the attacking minded play. This game, Ankaza, this is the, was a game that we should have just opened and played. We would have scored Mexico. I'm just going to blame Chris Hutton. So guys, I mean, this, these are the problems I saw with the Blasters. And I believe this is the reason why the Blasters lost the game. It was a coaching problem. If you look through the game carefully, it was a coaching problem. It was as if we were too aggressive with what we were doing. It was just it was just too bad. Honestly, it was just too bad. The 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 the, the centre back pairing, no communication in the way. They, they were just like a physical, like Charlie, the back was just disorganized in the second half. It was sad. It was sad. To me, it, it was as if I wasted time to watch the match. I will lie to you. Let me know yours down below in the comment section. Yeah, let me know yours. I'll I will bring another video where I'll do a player rating. Each player be our boy game, no. 
I'll do a player rating and tell you why this player should be rated in this particular rating. I mean, this is based on my opinion. This is how I saw the game. Let me know yours down below in the comment section. Thanks for joining me. My name is Adam. I'll make sure to see you in the next video. Charlie, we go vibe.